offensive in Iraq. On September the 11th, 2001, the offensive against terror networks. To make the tax cuts permanent. The Patriot Act for Social Security. September the 11th. May God bless America. All right, guys, welcome back to the Right Side Radio program. Uh, tons of stuff happened today. I told you, the libertarians will have a prayer. I'm going to get to that story later. It, it, it's so interesting to see this woman basically using her boobies to, to I shouldn't have said that, uh, to using her uh, her breast or uh, to run for office. And if that's not the the most typical libertarian platform, I have no uh, idea what is. The only thing that could probably make the campaign more libertarian is a, uh, a heroin needle in her arm or something. Yeah. Uh, what do you hear this story? And it gets better because the, the whole concept of libertarianism, uh, in theory, uh, sometimes is, is attractive to conservatives because they stand for, for smaller government. Mm-hmm. But in practice, socially, it's somewhat uh, chaotic. And how do we know this? Well, uh, there are other gov- uh, governments out there that... Uh, that, that, that flirt with the libertarianism, such as uh, in Amsterdam. And you know what the laws are like in Amsterdam. Anything goes in Amsterdam. Jeremy's probably been to Amsterdam. Jeremy probably has a, a VIP room in Amsterdam, maybe a, a plaque mm-hmm. up somewhere in Amsterdam. And, and I like Mickey, and she likes me back! <laughs> and she showed me her movies, and I like them too! Okay, okay, this is family radio. <laughs> What's that? That was from Waterboy, wasn't yes, it? Yes, it was. Um, that's the libertarian producer we have. <laughs> Amsterdam. Uh, got a story there I want to talk about later as well. I may hit this twice just because it really is uh, disturbing on so many levels. What if I told you that Amsterdam has about 2,000 soldiers serving in Afghanistan right now? That's pretty impressive. Mm-hmm. Can you believe France wouldn't back us, but <laughs> folks over, but... <laughs> The Netherlands or whatever. Okay, listen. Okay, I got to get serious here. Here's the thing, though. There's a big debate right now in Amsterdam as to what we should be doing or what they should be doing in regards to prostitutes and the military. A Dutch mayor over there has raised eyebrows by backing the idea that they need, that is the government over there, they need to send prostitutes along with the army when the army goes on foreign missions. This is her uh, her breakdown. This is the logic behind it. The army must consider ways that soldiers can let off steam. <laughs> um, I, you know, I, is there? It, it, it shouldn't shock anybody that those countries over there in, in that part of the world really lost their military dominance years and years ago. This is so French-like. This, this is something you would hear Jacques Chirac say. Well, we'll go fight the war, but we need some donuts, some pastries, and some hookers. Right. Come on, folks. I'm serious. This, this is a Dutch mayor. This is a woman that the people over there trust. There's at least one soldier here being interviewed, and he's married. Mm-hmm. So you know what his answer was. I can imagine what the single soldiers were thinking, but the married soldier says, look, I don't think this is a good idea at all. I, of course, you <laughs> Yeah, don't tell my wife. Uh, I just, libertarians, can't you guys just stop at the small government thing? I, we all agree, small government's better government. Small government, more freedom, more liberty. But do you really want to buy cocaine at your junior food march? Do you, do you really want to go to the 7-Eleven and right next to the chicken on a stick you see some crack? Is that is that really what we're looking for here with the Libertarian Party? I would hope not. And what makes matters worse, the person selling the crack to you behind the counter, probably a hooker. And <laughs> and you can probably, probably on any, any 7-Eleven, you can probably get a, a, a dual discount. Maybe if you get a hooker and some crack, maybe they give you a discount on that. Hmm. That's, that's the idea of libertarianism. It's the new blue light special, huh? Something like that. It's, it's actually the red light special. Oh, yeah. Ah, oh, jeez. I, I, I'll get back to that later because the story is so attractive. And I've got to get Jeremy's opinion <laughs> on that story. He's busy right now. He's producing, mm-hmm. cutting some of those fabulous sound clips that keep the show number one in the listeners' hearts all across the country. Right, Jer- Right? No? Somebody? Sure. Uh, I want to get to these polls here in a second, but I've got to uh, to wait because uh, they're so shocking on so many levels. I think you folks are going to like these polls. I predicted it just the other day. I said the base is going to come out. Well, the base is coming out. These elections are turning. It's uh, 
it's attractive. And I'm pretty happy because, guys, you know what's going to happen. You really do if the Democrats win. What you're going to look forward to is a couple of things. Amnesty for 12 million aliens. You're going to see a push to make homosexual marriage and polygamy completely legal in all 50 states. They're going to make sure that only liberal justices are appointed. That one in and of itself is damaging enough. You see, the Democrats, uh, the liberals, have never really had the numbers from a legislative standpoint to push their agenda on the American people. However, what they have had is a very active federal judiciary. Uh, you know, if they get control of the White House again one day, which is uh, probably a, a reality, and they have control of Congress, imagine the liberal justices. They're going to create more laws than you can imagine to implement their social agenda. And uh, you, you won't recognize the country. Liberals also, as part of that social agenda, they want to make it easier to kill the unborn. Liberals want to continue to rid our society even of the Christian influence that has been so dominant here for the past 230 plus years, removing any reference to God in our Pledge of Allegiance or removing any uh, reference to God in our currency. For that matter, removing any reference of Christmas and Target. Give me a break. They also want to have uh, new social taxes, uh, new social programs, pass new hate crime laws for homosexuals. Whatever you can imagine, I can give you the parade of horribles, and that's what's coming. And I tell you, that's one of the reasons the uh, the Republicans are so fired up right now. That's one of the reasons we have a great shot to keep the House of Representatives now and to keep the Senate now. Uh, we'll get to that. We'll get to that, Jack. i got to also tell a story of what happened to Jack just the other night. Oh. You, you were there. Uh, yeah, I think it happened to me, so yeah. You were there. Um, we have a county fair here. We talk about this county fair from time to time on this program. And Jack was there. And his glory. <laughs> if you want to call it that. Yeah, uh, I, Jeremy, are you there? Can you talk to us right now? No? Hey, can, hey turn on your mic right now. Can you, can you do that real quick? Yeah, what's going on? All right, got to tell you this story. You tell me what your first reaction is, okay? All right. All right. The other night we're at the county fair here in uh, Jones County. Big okay. county fair. I know you guys in Chicago don't really know what a county fair is, but it's a time to, to fry anything in sight. And eat it, and it's also a time to ride cheap rides. Well, they have games on the midway, as you know, and one of the games, it's a baseball game. You take a baseball and you sling that baseball as aggressively and as quickly as you can at some bottles that are sticking up, I don't know, 20 feet away. You've seen this game, haven't you, Jeremy? Yeah, they play it in the alley behind my house. Okay, well, okay, the game, whether you're in the alley in Chicago or in uh, Mississippi, is to, is to break the bottle. And I broke a bottle. Right? Okay. That's but it is. The name of the game is like breaking bottles. It's not misplacing bottles or displacing bottles. It's breaking bottles. Jack, in his uh, Major League Pitcher uh, grand arm that he carries, he, he slings back the ball and he hits the uh, uh, a bottle. And it broke. What do you think happens to the bottle, Jeremy? Uh, uh, it broke? You would think, right? A baseball hit it. You would think anybody over the age of six could break the bottle, right? <laughs> what if I told you the ball bounced off the bottle? <laughs> it didn't bounce off the bottle. <laughs> Jeremy, the ball bounced off the bottle, and the bottle falls harmlessly, fully intact to the ground. The question is, is that a win or is that a loss as far as Jack's concerned? Bottle broke. I'll give him an E for effort. E for effort. See, I would have too, but the bottle did not break. It break. No, it didn't. Jack, Jack can walk up to the board and uh, draw a little star next to his name. But well, what happened is, Jack, here's how bad it got, Jeremy. And we may we may want to bring this up uh, in the next segment because this might be a good thing to talk about. Jack, this conservative talk radio host, he, he lied to the carney. Did not. I broke the bottle. He lied to the carney. You, you can quit arguing about that. I can assure you, folks, the bottle did not break. The bottle broke. He argued. Uh, he didn't even argue. He lied to the carney. And it's funny how, how now clear you are that the bottle broke. When the carney asked you what happened, you said, I got one. You didn't say I broke one. You said, I got one. Yeah. I have no doubt you got one, but you didn't break one. I got one, and you got it. And I broke one. No, no, see, that's not what happened. You're going to lie to the listeners now? I broke it. There was a witness. I broke it. No, you're lying. I can't believe you. Were, seriously, Jack, you're lying. I believe it broke. I heard glass shatter. <laughs> I believe you would lie about something so simple. It may not have shattered. You've lost all credibility. The glass was in full, full, full form when it fell. You know what you heard? You know what he heard? He heard the glass hitting other glass that had broken earlier in the night. 
Oh, for the love of Pete, you're going to lie to me? Oh, and I'm sitting there and I saw it? You didn't even see the throw. <laughs> sure, I saw the throw. John was sitting... Well, we're not going to get into that. I can't believe you would lie like that. It broke. I know. It broke. I, would. I'm I know. I know, that. Bill. I, I know, Mr. Clinton. I know you believe it broke, and you all, uh, I'm sure you believe she didn't have sex with him and all this, whatever. That's all I'm saying. Yeah, this is the right side. I... You lied to the carney, and, and, and realistically, you need to go apologize to the carney. He probably had his feelings hurt. Yeah. The bottle didn't break. Uh, and it's just time to... I'm pushing for honesty on this program, and it's about time you apologize to these people that you've lied to. No. This is the right side. We'll be right back. The stakes couldn't be any higher, as I said earlier, in the world in which we live. There are, uh, there are extreme elements 